Okay, so now we come to cognitive load. Uh, this is, cognitive load theory has been around for quite a while and we're just gonna talk about some of the key aspects of it and then look at how we're going to use that in applying stuff to our classroom. So cognitive load is all about your working memory and it's basically about how many elements or items your working memory can handle at any one time because you've got a load on your working memory. So normally it's two to four uh, for you to use in a working memory load. If you know the content really well, you can do up to about eight uh, different items or elements. And one of the key bits about this is actually it's the, the number of relationships between these elements that matters, not so much the number of elements. So you know, you're talking about if there's three elements, how many relationships are there between those elements that the student needs to keep in their brain while they're thinking through it. Your cognitive load will only last about 20 seconds unless it's refreshed. And we will naturally refresh our memories all the time as we're thinking about things. So, you know, I might be talking about something right now, 20 seconds later, I need to have a quick look, refocus, where am I going next? Uh, or it might be something that the students are thinking about. They might be discussing the process of writing a paragraph uh, and they can focus on that for a little bit and they'll have another quick look at it, go again. And yeah, essentially they, they can do that repetition of 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, one on top of the other for around 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and then after that, they're gonna to start to fatigue and they need a proper five minute break where their brain gets a chance to do something else. Uh, learning is also about putting things into schemata, so into organizing the, con the knowledge. So if you've already got schemata in your brain, your load goes down. If you've got no prior stuff to actually connect anything to, then your load goes up because you have to use all your working memory to process this and you can't keep going back to long-term memory uh, hooks and jogs like an expert can, which is why they can then do eight um, different elements or items is because they actually already have a lot of stuff in their long-term memory to rely on and to pull upon. Now, after four items, the ability to think really starts to decrease uh, if basic skills and knowledge are automated, though, it can free up space for deeper thinking. So if we're getting used to some of the rehearsed processes of thinking and you're training your students in a particular methodology for how they uh, approach things, maybe a system of questions that they use or something, that will help make the learning easier because it will free up some of the space in their working memory for dealing with the items that you're giving them. Um, and mastering the low level knowledge will increase the space for deeper thinking and problem solving. So if you master the basic item or multiple items, it then becomes easier for you to do the critical thinking, the creative thinking, the problem solving, as you start to look deeper into thinking and uh, because you've already got that base, you've already got that prior knowledge. And so you can keep going in and out of that prior knowledge and taking a bit out, doing a working memory and go, oh, I need another bit, go and get that bit use it in your working memory. And that will really then allow your students to think uh, more deeply about the content if they've already mastered that basic stuff. Repetition and consolidation is needed in order for students to automate their thinking. So once they've kind of got it, you need to make sure you're building in that repetition, the reciting of stuff to them, uh, going back and uh, reviewing items that they've learnt e earlier or, you know, the doing a test this term on stuff you did last term, just to refresh it and make sure that it's still in your brain, uh, that you're developing those recall pathways in your brain. Uh, and so the more you repeat that, the more the brain develops those pathways, it becomes easier and more automated for you to recall uh, that information and the same for your students. So your programs really need to have that built in, that spaced repetition for your students to help them to consolidate their learning and to automate the processes that they then need and reduce their cognitive load. Uh, a lack of basic or prior knowledge will increase the cognitive load. So if you are coming to a bunch of students and they're all at different stages in their prior knowledge and you try and give them all the same stuff, the ones who don't have it, they're just gonna flop around. They're gonna have, be clueless about what you're talking about and what you want them to do. And that's gonna be difficult for you uh, and you'll because they don't have that. And that means their cognitive load, when they actually try, it's too hard. And that's what they're gonna tell you. It's too hard, I, don't, I can't get this. And you'll become frustrated with it if you don't think about it in terms of actually, where are they actually at? What do you know? Okay, the next thing you need to know from that is probably this and that. So let's focus on two things, hook that in, and then we'll go to the next two things. 
and just kind of build on it with them. And then eventually, once they've got that good basic prior knowledge, then you can start to uh, increase what you're giving them to think about because their cognitive uh, load will become less and frees up space for more items and elements and deeper thinking. Yeah.